powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us this Friday. I'm Janelle Slade. And I'm Russ Reesinger. An update tonight surrounding last night's fatal motorcycle crash on Billings West End. Authorities have released the name of the 20-year-old motorcyclist killed as investigators ask for your help to identify another motorcyclist possibly involved. 20-year-old Paul Sherman was found dead in the 3600 block of Grand Avenue. A passerby saw Sherman lying on the ground on the roundabout and then saw the crash motorcycle. Police say the incident happened about 11.30 p.m. and investigators found skid marks leading up to that roundabout. Yellowstone County Assistant Coroner Rich Hoffman says Sherman died of multiple blunt force injuries. Billings police are now looking for a damaged candy apple green Kawasaki. They believe that individual may know something about the wreck Anyone with information is asked to contact law enforcement. A 95 year old Billings woman was also killed this morning after she ran a stop sign at the intersection of 17th Street West and Avenue E. Meryl Stansberry was injured when another vehicle heading north T-boned her car. Stansberry later died at the hospital. Another woman was taken to the hospital with what appeared to be non life threatening injuries. Billings police say the other driver was not at fault and there will be no citations. And late this afternoon, a pickup truck barreled into a Billings Heights strip mall, pinning a woman under the vehicle. Sergeant Clyde Reed tells us the truck crashed through the tattoo shop and beauty salon at 643 Main Street around 4 o'clock. Reed says the Billings woman who works in one of the businesses was pinned on the floor under that truck for about 30 minutes. She was taken to the hospital for injuries to her lower lower extremities. Now the driver of the truck, a Billings man, was transported for minor injuries. Sergeant Reed says there were no obvious signs of alcohol or drugs involved, but the crash is still under investigation. There's been another mass shooting. This time a gunman killed 12 people and injured at least six in an attack at the Virginia Beach Municipal Center. The suspect was killed in the attack. CBS News' Natalie Brandt has the latest. This is the most devastating day in the history of Virginia Beach. Police say an armed Virginia Beach city worker entered a municipal building Friday afternoon and opened fire. We have multiple live victims that are coming out. As frantic city employees called 911, police rushed to the scene with some taking cover behind vehicles. We are still actively clearing the building for victims and secondary suspects. Police said the suspect who was killed in an exchange with officers was a longtime public utilities employee. They believe he was the only shooter in the massacre. We do know that shortly after 4 p.m. this afternoon, the suspect entered building two and he immediately began to indiscriminately fire upon all the victims. A responding officer was also shot and injured. Authorities say his vest saved his life. Workers at the city government complex heard the gunfire and took cover. My boss, um, Basically, it was like, this is not a drill, get down, call 911. There was probably about 20 of us in an office crammed in. We barricaded the door. The area was put on lockdown as building two of the municipal center was searched room by room. Police say victims were found on all three floors and one was found in a car outside the building. Authorities later said the scene of the attack was secure as the investigation continued into the evening. Natalie Brand, CBS News. The Virginia Beach Police Department had been planning an active threat citizens defense workshop for tomorrow. A Billings businessman accused in a $43 million bank fraud scam pleads not guilty in a federal courtroom in New York. 47-year-old Todd Capser appeared in a Manhattan courtroom yesterday. Capser was initially arrested in Billings earlier this month, but moved the case to New York because one of the banks involved operates there. Now, Capser is accused of falsifying documents to obtain millions of dollars from a Canadian bank to buy two oil tankers. After falling behind on loan payments, Capser allegedly fabricated documents to get loans from nine different banks across the country. Capser was released after posting a $100,000 bond. His travel restricted to New York and Montana. His next court appearance is scheduled for Tuesday in New York. A Yellowstone National Park visitor facing a fine of up to $5,000 for leaving a boardwalk at Grand Prismatic Spring. MTN's John Shear was in the park and learned another visitor turned the man in. Here at Grand Prismatic Spring, the signs are clear. There are at least five in this loop alone that say, stay on the walkway. One man 
thought those signs didn't apply to him. The crust in that area and other thermal areas can be very thin. Put a little weight on that crust and someone could fall right through. Underneath the crust uh, is uh, scalding hot water and they could suffer severe burns uh, or even uh, die. The person who posted the video to social media also took a photo of the man involved and a photo of the license plate of the car he was traveling in and then went immediately to find a park ranger. Sometimes uh, they'll wait days and they'll post it on their personal uh, social media accounts or they might tell their friends, but uh, that doesn't help us too much after the fact. Um, but reporting it promptly helps us. Varess says this is a perfect case in point of a park visitor acting as a Yellowstone steward. The park asks visitors when they're out and about in the park that if they see someone who um, who uh, might hurt themselves or others or the park uh, to report it. Promptly reporting dangerous situations like the one here at Grand Prismatic is a part of the Yellowstone pledge to help safeguard the park. It's a way to give a hand to rangers and other park staff members who just can't be everywhere all the time. In Yellowstone National Park, I'm John Shearer for MTN News. Well, the man ticketed could also face up to six months in jail. Because the park is federal land, a federal judge may eventually determine the punishment. Well, on the weather scene, it looks like a perfect weekend to head to Yellowstone Park and stay on the boardwalk, yes, as yeah. Russ just said. But just being outside this weekend, Bob. Well, it's like summer because tomorrow is the meteorological summer, June 1st. That's just how we do it. So it's going to feel like summer. Not calendar summer, but meteorological summer. Take a look what happened today. As you can see, Doppler radar showed these big thunderstorms coming right at us. Down sloping winds inhibited the rainfall development, and all of a sudden they just kind of dried up and blew away. That's not so bad, huh? Well, let me show you what our forecast is for the weekend. Check this out. Maybe poolside wouldn't be a bad idea because we're looking at maybe 78 degrees on Saturday for the high, 83 degrees on Sunday for the high. Now, are we going to see any splash and dash showers? Well, here we are Saturday, 6 a.m., and we'll probably see some spotty showers, but you'll notice they're not coming to the Billings area. Then what about on Sunday? Well, once again, afternoon splash and dash showers, but here again, it looks like it'll just be hit or miss all around us. Not looking for much here this weekend, guys. It's one of the best weekends we've had this year. We'll have more on the forecast in a few more minutes. All right, thanks so much, Bob. Well, as Canadian wildfires consume nearly 600,000 acres now, the smoke is filling Montana skies. As communities across the state deal with that haze, health experts remind the public to limit exposure to the unhealthy air. MTN's Jonathan Ambarian has more. People across large areas of Montana woke up to smoke-filled skies on Friday morning. Air quality in places like Helena, Haver, and Cutbank peaked in the unhealthy range. We're under a fairly stable air pattern right now that's causing that smoke to settle into the valleys a bit too. So that's why Helen, I think, is seeing a bit worse than areas like Great Falls. Now, state health leaders are reminding the public about the possible effects of being exposed to smoke. Wildfire smoke can act as an irritant. Um, so even when exposed for a short period of time, um, people can experience a cough, itchy or irritated eyes, sore throat, shortness of breath. Even when air quality isn't officially unhealthy, leaders recommend limiting vigorous outdoor activity, especially for sensitive groups like children, older people, pregnant women, and those with heart or lung conditions. We recommend that people stay indoors uh, with their windows and doors closed. If they do have an air conditioner, uh, we'd recommend that they set it to recirculate. You will also want to focus on reducing indoor exposures. Those are things like tobacco smoke in the home, uh, vacuuming that might kick up dust. The Montana Department of Environmental Quality operates a website called Today's Air. It features hourly air quality updates from 19 monitoring stations around Montana. People in other areas can estimate their air quality using visibility. If you can see at least five miles, the air is probably good. Below that, the quality is starting to deteriorate. Well, we do recommend that you check air quality before embarking on, on outdoor activities just to make sure it's not a time where uh, yeah. air quality is spiking and use your best judgment. If it smells really smoky, if it looks really hazy outside, uh, then even if the website hasn't updated yet for the new hour, but smoke has rolled in to consider air quality to be uh, degrading. In Helena, Jonathan Ambarian, MTN News. Thanks, Jonathan. Now, if you're sensitive to the smoke, an N95 mask will limit the particles that you breathe in. And you also want to make sure it's uh, fitted correctly and you know how to use it safely.
Well, coming up on tonight's 10 o'clock news out of tragedy, a Butte Elementary School is turning a sad day into a lesson in friendship. We will show you. Plus, this man brought Saturday mornings and music to life. We're going to meet the man behind some of your favorite cartoons. And tonight in sports, it's Legion against cancer at the ballpark. Scott shows us if your Scarlets or Royals come out on top. You're watching MTN News with Janelle Slade and Russ Riesinger. Storm Tracker weather with Bob McGuire and sports with Scott Breen. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader.